All right, moving right along. We have doubled the goal of the litigation fund. Do not try to donate right now because it is not accepting any donations. Uh, Law Pay has told us that they would not approve the underwriting for this account any further. Um, and that is because the way that IOLTAs or uh, IOLTAs work is that it is impossible. It is illegal for them to touch the funds of this account, even to withdraw fees. The only person that can withdraw money from this account uh, is my attorney under my direction. So they can't get their processing fees out for this. And if people were to start doing certain things, uh, they would be in trouble for it. Um, so usually with a uh, regular account, they would just take the money out to deal with any problems. With an IOLTA, they literally cannot touch it. So this is $150,000 of liability that they don't have any ability to deal with. And um, we're trying to figure out what we can do with with the... I would like to keep the payment processor open because if people want to chip in, you know, a couple hundred dollars a week, that adds up over a year, right? That's not small chump change. That's like if it's enough money, it might actually pay for ongoing litigation fees as they come in. So it's like the the money is still there um, if people are going to continue to to donate to it. So uh, Hardin's opinion is that we should keep it open and and maybe change processors. Um, however, that that's difficult. Not just not because of complaints. This isn't like oh my god, this is the Kiwi Farms IELTA account question mark. We have to shut this down. It's that um, they don't want to deal with small amounts because they're like a a lawyer system. So they're expecting payments to be in like the range of. Um, like a thousand dollars each minimum, and then they don't have any ways to recoup fees without just trusting us to pay the fees. So they don't want to have the account open still. Um, so as a result, uh, we're going to have to either give up on this or try and find some way to compromise with them. Like uh, one of the things that was suggested is that I, uh, when you put in your, your card information, I'm sent a token, which I can apply charges to, and it might be possible for me to apply a charge for the IOLTA and then also apply a second charge for like 5% of the original amount, um, plus a dollar or two, uh, based on the way that the fee structure works. And that goes into the, um, liabilities account. So there would be something like that. Uh, but that has to be worked out. They might not accept it. It's a huge pain in the ass. Bankers are evil. And if that doesn't work, I'm also going to consider if there's some way just use Bitcoin, man. When people like this, is I, I, in a way I empathize with wings of redemption. When people are like, have you tried appearing offline? Yeah, actually I have. So the total amount for this account is $150,000, not including any money order uh, stuff. You know what the, um, the amount of crypto that I received is not including one specific donation was like more than half a Bitcoin. Um, but that's from a person who gives Bitcoin like consistently. Uh, the amount that I've received in, in cryptocurrency is like $5,000. The amount of people who actually carry and use cryptocurrency is very, very small, a percentage of all people who have money. So look here, look, listen, I would love it if we had a functional cryptocurrency market that everybody had access to and it was entirely possible to replace standard normal payment mechanisms with cryptocurrency i would be the happiest fucking person in the world i have been pushing cryptocurrency since at least 2016 at least i'm one of the first adopters of cryptocurrency that i know of because i had no choice i was debanked way before a lot of people were i would love it if everyone used crypto not many people do it is not possible to finance a lawsuit off cryptocurrency donations alone. Um, so that's not an option. The other thing that we're looking at is maybe it's possible to do e-check ACH deposits and integrate that and skip payment processors as a whole. Um, and maybe that would be fewer fees, less liability, and uh, the processor would be happier. So we're looking into it. It may or may not work, work out, but... It's not going down without a fight, basically. I mean, money orders are nice, but the issue is, is that people have to go outside and go to a post office and have the money, like, cash in hand to buy one. Um, and, uh, like, I'm not trying to be mean. That's just the way that it works. Like, when you design a web page, here's, here's a fun fact. When you design a web page, they often tell you to put, like, the checkout form 
on the, the page where the product is so that the page doesn't have to reload. Because even though you just read this and then you click the red button or to go to this page or you um, just go up here and click card, even though that's really obvious and like right in front of your face, like uh, there is a, what they call drop off, like 3% of people will not do that. 3% like at least, so at least like a certain percentage of people won't even bother to go to a second page, even if they are willing to spend money reading this on the first page. So that's called friction. You know how much friction there is in getting someone to go drive to the post office and buy a money order and mail it out? Like a lot, <laughs> like that's a 90% drop off at least. So uh, yeah, I would like it if things were certain ways. They just don't. Um, if they don't have a button to press that's right in front of their face, most people just won't. That's just the way it is. Um, cool. Uh, so what I was going to say in regards to this, I have to be careful with what I say. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read these things. Um, and you can come to your own opinions and, uh, I will not, I will add no commentary. I will just, I know you guys like my voice, my dulcet tones, my wonderful elocution, my perfect enunciation, my excellent spelling and reading ability. I am in no way a fumbling dyslexic mongoloid who barely knows a single language. Um, so let me get a sip of water and then I'll read some stuff and I warn you, I will read some stuff, but I have no commentary on it. This water has electrolytes. In the United States district court for the district of Utah central division, Plaintiff Russell G. Greer versus Joshua Moon, publisher of the Kiwi Farms and Kiwi Farms, a website, defendants. A plaintiff's supplemental memorandum in support of his motion to stay. So the plaintiff has filed a motion to stay. The motion to stay was replied to. Um, and generally that's how it works. So I, from my understanding, the way that a, a filings in courts work is that the person actioning a, mem uh, a, a filing submits a whole and complete filing, everything they could possibly hope to say with uh, foresight to make sure that there is no holes to be poked into it. And they submit it to the court. And then, of course, the time that it would take to reply to such a, a motion is considered in cost. And if it's not worth the time to reply, sometimes it's let slide. Like if it's just asking for trivial stuff or for um, certain technicalities, you know, you, there's a there's a certain le level of professional courtesy where you don't oppose every every motion. But a lot of motions get opposed. And so when you write your opposition, you write a big, long letter addressing every single point that you want to make. Um, and you try to make this as whole and accurate as possible. And that is usually the end of it. There is almost no reason to reply to this. Like the, it, this doesn't continue on in a conversation forever. You file, they counter, and unless there is a serious egregious error that must urgently be addressed because it is so profoundly bad, uh, perhaps an outright, outright lie or something that would like seriously actively, uh, do what they call um, prejudice, the case against you, then you just let it go and you let the, the judge make a decision based off those two filings. You don't go back and forth forever on every single issue. So plaintiff files a motion to stay to get 90 days of time. You file your opposition and the judge will look at both and say, okay, well, let's do this. We're going to go side with one party or we're going to, how about halfway down, we'll give them 30 days instead of 90, something like that. That's usually how it goes. Uh, the plaintiff in this case has decided to file a supplemental memorandum in support of his motion to stay as a reply <laughs> to um, uh, the opposition to his motion to stay. Let us, this is unusual. So let's read it. Plaintiff Russell Greer has received jarring information that bolsters his motion to stay and demonstrates why there would be hardship if a stay were denied. Email notifying plaintiff. This is how Russell would read it, by the way. I'm trying to read it as close to how he would read it as I think is possible. So I'm trying to get some confidence in my voice. 
email notifying plaintiffs to opposing counsel fundraising off of quote unquote bull cows. On February 7th, 2024, plaintiff received a harassing email from Kiwi Farms user or from a Kiwi Farms user, a Matthew Burns. In case you're wondering, I cannot find any Matthew Burns on the Kiwi Farms. This email not only mocked Rear by calling him, quote, pipsqueak rat mouth, but directed plaintiff to the fact that opposing counsel is fundraising, fundraising off of the current case, Exhibit A. The link leads to lolcalfund.harden.law. The link leads to a lolcal litigation fund and has a short blurb and crude drawing of plaintiff, Exhibit B. The link appears to belong to Matthew Harden, opposing counsel, and shows that $150,000 has been raised. As the footnote says, low cows are people who can be milked for laughs. While defendants and their donors might think this case is hilarious and they think Greer is a foolish quote-unquote pipsqueak, dealing with kiwi farms has been a nightmare and he seeks to end his nightmare. Paragraph 2. Why this evidence supports a stay? Actually, let me read the footnote. As journalist Ali Breland points out, the users call their victims lol cows because their pain can be milked for laughs. This group made it made its purpose qu- clear on its Twitter page before it was taken down. Quote, gossip and exploitation of mentally handicapped for amusement purposes. The website's quote, the website that wants you to kill yourself, Mother Jones, 2023. The article goes on to explain Kiwi Farms users deploy significantly or slightly different tactics for various victims, but the rough beats say the same. First, the group assembles extensive dossiers, then it uses the information, some true, some contorted, and some fabricated, to torment their targets. This is exactly what Matthew Burns, quote-unquote, did to Greer. Paragraph 2. Why this evidence supports the stay? This evidence supports the stay because it shows many different things. (laughs) found by the way uh he's complaining about the he first like look look at this i just want to say this point something out um quote quote in quotes as in this is literally what says low cow litigation fund low cow llc litigation fund uh we are in year three of this litigation and when this was filed it sued kiwi farms a website Kiwi Farms, a website, is owned by Local LLC, and even in this filing, it falsely says Local Litigation Fund, seemingly omitting the LLC part. The company is literally Local LLC, I, I, and this has never been acknowledged. I just want to point this out. This is not a reference to the people. This is a reference to the company to whom it supports. I would consider that a significant issue. Um, number one, defendants and their counsel are fundraising off of this case and off of Greer's apparent quote unquote lol cow status. It shows that defendants are well oiled and ready to last a long time, dude. That's my dating profile description. I'm well oiled and ready to last for the long run. That's that's a that's an advertisement if I've ever heard one. Number three. And put simply, this evidence points to the hardship requirements as laid out by the Tenth Circuit. Spahn Eng Associates versus Weidna. Uh, If a motion to stay is denied, Greer will potentially lose the case because he is outmanned and outpowered by defendants. Because they have the funding to have a lawyer. If Greer loses this case, Kiwi Farms users like Matthew Burns will taunt and harass Greer for the rest of his life. Greer's copyrights will continue to be infringed. Greer's career as a songwriter is dead because of Kiwi Farms users tarnishing Greer's works, uh, which works against their fair use argument. argument, Defendants have raised $150,000 off of Greer. Plaintiffs have seen none of the money for having his likeness or copyrights used. And so Greer kindly asked for a stay to acquire funds himself to the appellate counsel, to retain his appellate counsel at the district level and thus properly vindicate his copyrights. In light of the new information showing that defendants are fundraising off of this and thus showing how serious the matter is, plaintiff respectfully reiterates his request to stay the case as laid out in document 77, respectfully submitted by what appears to be a pubic hair caught in the scanner 
aka Russell Greer, a pro se litigant. Uh, this is seemingly a standard signature at the um, at the end of the document. Just something of no consequence, but actually is of consequence. Um, plaintiff affirms that service was made to defendants via the court's electronic filing system and personally emailing opposing counsel on uh, February 7th, Matthew Harden. We'll get to that in a second. In the United States District Court District for the District of Utah. That's a long name. The United States District Court District for the District of Utah. It's not just the District of Utah, but the District for the District of Utah, Central Division. Russell G. Greer versus Joshua Moon and Kiwi Farms, a website. Response to notice regarding erroneous certificate of service. So Harden responded to this um, in two parts. And one of them said, I was not serviced. <laughs> Which uh, seems weird. Let's read what he has to say. Plaintiff Russell Greer responds and says that this has already been addressed. This is true. The same exact thing was complained about before. This ad was addressed in Doc 79. Once again, plaintiff does not have access to the filing system. This has been established. Greer emails his documents to the document department, and so the day he emails them to be filed isn't always the day when they are filed. Once plaintiff receives the receipt, he emails the documents to defendants as it is quite silly to have to change the date. Additionally, plaintiff was only emailing defendants the motion to stay documents because it was an emergency. Normally, plaintiff will rely on the filing system and the defendants don't email rear documents. Uh, any further notices regarding this filing date contention should be viewed as frivolous. So it is I, it is we who are frivolous. We are the frivolous ones. Uh, also... <laughs> Uh, was service made to the defense via the current system and that said attorneys for the defense of Matthew Harden. Um, Greer is not emailing Harden. This sounds like a trivial thing, but I want you to imagine how frustrating this is. You file something called an emergency. You put an emergency uh, motion into the court system and then you email the clerk of court and you say, this is my filing, here you go. And because he he's right, he's a pro se litigant, so he doesn't have access to the court system um, and said the, the clerk has to file it for him, no issue. Because he can also just email Harden, no issue. Um, but uh, to quote my learned lawyer, and I hope that he was being serious when he says I can quote him, he's a fucking moron. And what does that mean? Um, he is lying about emailing Harden. And it's not that he can't email Harden. Um, it is that... Uh, he chooses not to because, for instance, in this complaint where he sends this exhibit, uh, this was actually sent directly to Harden complaining, um, which he made a matter of public record because he filed it as an exhibit. So he complained to Harden about his crowdfund and had no issue emailing him. But when it comes to this, uh, he does not, for whatever reason, he chooses. And the belief is that this is a deliberate choice. Because now Harden receives notification about filings through Pacer when it gets actually added to the, the system the day after he emails it to the clerk of court, then Harden gets an email from Pacer saying that there's a new filing when he should be notified as soon as it's submitted to the clerk of court as a CC. And that's all he has to do. CC Harden into the fucking email so that he has the full amount of time to respond to emergency orders or requests. Doesn't get done. Very bizarre. Um, then finally plaintiff's response to defendant's notice of supplemental authority. Plaintiff Russell Greer responds and says that the email from Ad Andrew Grimm doesn't disprove plaintiff's motion to state the case. The email provided by defendants clearly shows Grimm saying that the digital justice foundation currently does not represent Greer, but the digital justice foundation was reserving the right to re represent plaintiff. This is exactly what plaintiff explained in his motion this day. Harden took advantage of this unequal playing field by inquiring of plaintiff's appellate counsel. The Digital Justice Foundation answered no because the kinks and logistics of district court represent representation were being worked on. As stated in the motion to stay, there are a few stipulations they want from plaintiff before committing to representation. So basically, Okay, is it fixed? 
It was fucking annoying just having chat bitch the entire fucking time. Like, I'm sorry the fucking thing is slow. I don't know what you want me to do with it. I can't get fucking Starlink. I can't improve the connection. Okay, is it better? Can we continue? Okay, great. So, as I was saying, the issue is is that he literally does not have the money. He's contacting these people that represented him for free because they wanted to score a win in the appellate court, and he's asking them to represent him in a lower court. They're, he's in fucking Utah. They're from L.A. L.A. lawyers ask for a lot of money, like $900 an hour, a lot of money. Um, so Greer thinks that if he is given 90 days between filings, that he will be able to afford um, these specific attorneys. Now, he has had years to acquire representation years he filed on his own um three fucking years ago he had months after the appellate decision was reached because the digital justice foundation would have informed him that they're only representing him in the appellate court and not the lower court and he knew after then that he could find representation and he didn't file any kind of stay of anything until after uh, the motions came in after uh his answer was or his uh complaint was answered then he decided, oh, I need time and to to work to afford an attorney for litigation that I can drop it literally any time. Is it, is, it, is there still a fucking streaming issue? Is it like why are people still like I see green? Is there still a fucking issue with the stream? Okay, Jesus. I played that. So that's the, the litigation shit. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. I am so like it, subscribe.